Welcome everyone to the Generation Z Guys podcast by Lustra UM India. This is a series of podcasts where we discuss all things Gen Z. This is the episode 6 of the series of the podcast and today we'll be discussing different Gen Z personas because not one size fits all. If you're new to the podcast and you've discovered this podcast for the first time and you like listening to this one, you can go back and listen to the previous ones. We've recorded around 5 of them previously. I'm Kunlat and you'll be hearing my voice through the podcast and as always I have with me Lostra UM CEO our strat guru our markdarshak Aditi Mishra hi Aditi hi Kula hi everyone who's tuned in today to our podcast uh, a quick a uh, few words of introduction on how we have done this uh, gen z uh, podcast and what's the source uh, so to understand gen z we actually adopted a little different approach we uh, recruited an army of insiders who would actually go and uh, tell us more about their peers tell us more about their behaviors mindsets and habits and this was conducted over three phases over the last two years so we've captured things like the impact of covid how that has changed the way they take decisions how they look at life and also looked at this across a huge uh, study which was uh, quantitative as well as qualitative and understanding what's on their devices so all of this has been now summed up into a series of six podcasts and uh, today is really our final episode we are we are going to look at how they are split into different personas or personality types and how this can help us as a uh, brand uh, you know stakeholders or marketers to connect with them better to understand them better over to you kula yep so we'll straight over dive into it today's podcast if you have listened to the previous one this will be slightly different because we'll be discussing personas per se so we'll start with the overview of the the personas that we've uh, found we have looked at a particular framework to put all of those different personas in different buckets uh, just like a 2 two by 2 two, uh, four quadrant x y axis we we've, we've kind of plotted those uh, personas and after going through that framework we'll uh, look at each of the personas a little bit in depth and we'll hear from each of the personas a little bit representative of them so firstly when we plot those x in y axis we've looked at uh, from an x axis perspective we've looked at people who are self focused to people who are more uh, sense of belonging or group affiliation and in the y axis we've plotted people who are more pragmatic to people who are more hope driven or more optimistic so that's the kind of framework that we've looked at the largest uh, audience in that 2 by 2 framework uh, is the one who is more optimistic as well as uh, have more group affiliation so they are what we are calling them as a rooted pliants the second largest cohort is the people who are again uh, more in terms of group affiliation but more pragmatic in in their mindset so they are comfort zoners the third cohort which is the in terms of the largeness of the cohort they are self focused but they're more optimistic and positive in their mindset more hope driven so they are the balanced strength seeker and lastly is the one who are the smallest cohort they are the sensitive reserve to they are in the cross section of people who are self focused and more pragmatic in their mindset so these are the four cohorts uh, that we've looked at while uh everybody is typically uh, distributed well across uh, all the regions all the demography uh, but we we found some of the skews and uh, like for example the rooted uh, pliants they seems to be uh, skewed slightly more towards the female versus the comfort zoners who are uh, skewed heavily towards the male uh, like uh, the rooted pliants again so they are skewed towards the north of the country uh, and comfort zoners are distributed in east and south region more uh, the balance seekers are very much skewed towards the west of the country uh, the sensitive reserved are distributed in the east Uh, west and south of the country not so much in north in terms of the metro audiences they are more the comfort zoners who have more pragmatic and sense of belonging sort of a mindset and again the comfort zoners are more younger relative to the other audiences who are skewing more towards the old uh, gen z's this is like a overview uh, of the subgroups this kind of helps will help us if 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 any brand tomorrow decides to kind of focus on a particular let's say within the gen z because gen z is still a huge chunk of audience uh if you want to focus on a particular region the kind what kind of mindset in that region of the country uh, the gen z might have uh, or what kind of a mindset a younger gen z versus an older gen z can have so 
that's that's a kind of like an overview just wanted to throw up yeah so uh, you know um, as we know archetypes or personas yeah. can be created across multiple facets yes. or parameters yes. uh, the reason we sort of chose do these two uh, parameters to map the audience uh, in terms of their focus inwards as well as outwards okay. and uh, to look at uh, you know how uh, they grade themselves in terms of you know a very functional aspect of life versus a more future a forward uh, hope filled kind of a uh, view to life mm-hmm. is because all through the study what we uh, found is that uh, you know uh, gen z's are a lot more aware than generations before they have access to a lot more information they have sometimes they are actually getting drowned in that information mm-hmm. and therefore it's very important for them to sort of um, tease out what's what's important mm-hmm. and uh, in a way gen z's today more than ever are demanding a lot more from themselves yeah. in terms of you know how they want to shape their lives how they want to live their lives Lives. and at the same time there is a lot of expectation from the world at large how the world should be what is the right way for things to be and uh, therefore we felt this whole thing of uh, inward and outward balanced mm-hmm. and also what they do versus what can happen in the future we mm-hmm. thought these were two key parameters for us to understand their mindset and uh, as we went along this journey it was very interesting to see that there are people from a certain part of a country who mm. are more in tune yeah. uh, with with a certain kind of thinking the, they are more in tune with a with a certain way of being yeah. uh, which uh, we th- thought was quite interesting for us to look at from a brand lens in the future yeah. that different kinds of brand promises different kind of uh, you mm-hmm. know activities that yes. brands may undertake yeah. will resonate better with certain kinds of audiences yeah. and somewhere it could even give us uh, nuances saying that you know if you want the same brand to have a translation in the north versus the east yeah. perhaps yeah. you need to tweak things a, a bit perhaps yeah. you need yeah. to look at what would uh, cut through much better for a gen z yeah yeah so uh, yeah we'll start with the individual personas and then we'll start with the the biggest cohort which is the rooted clients the kind of mindset that they have uh, if you see their uh, position in that quadrant mapping is is all about like they are more in terms of group affiliation they have they mm-hmm. seek a sense of belonging and they are more hope driven they are more optimistic future forward as they said so they are uh, in that uh, quadrant so they are very much extrovert they like to share uh, with their friends family uh, they like to be part of uh, a particular team when they work uh, and very much sharing their own emotion uh, and also give respect and expect respect of others so that's the kind of uh, broad mindset that they have uh, they obviously seek uh, a mix of uh, convenience with good experience uh, they are uh, quite value in term, uh, value seeking in terms of their mindset uh, and a good thing about these audiences are these audiences are the most likely to be uh, influenced by uh, marketing activities or advertising that's what they've said uh, they do believe uh, that advertising kind of has a certain impact how digital media is, is kind of uh, influences them so they many of them have kind of said that now these personas are uh, skewed uh, slightly more towards the female audiences and uh, they're found much in the north they're very much skewed towards the north of the country uh, those are the two really stand out skew of the audiences uh, that we can find yeah, any thoughts anything yeah so uh, you know the way i was looking at this is you know this is an audience which uh, is impactful and impacted mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. that's an interesting skew because this is the largest share of people we have yeah. and uh, i think it it sums up well uh, the way gen z is typically are that yeah. they they want to have a, a print on the world mm-hmm. and uh, they definitely want to share that or or spread that amongst their peers amongst mm-hmm. uh, people through social and so on so visible they want to be visible yeah. in in a way you know visible for themselves and visible for the impact that they bring to the world so that that was an interesting aspect the other thing also is uh, you know and and which came out perhaps in the quotes we'll we'll share some with you is uh, they're a lot more emotional they're they're a lot more 
uh, happy talking about their emotions mm-hmm. so you know as we've been seeing in the last few podcasts certain issues like mental health or mm-hmm. you know uh, how other people feel has been something that has been a thread running mm-hmm. through much more than what the previous generations whether it's a millennial generation or the ones before were comfortable speaking about things mm-hmm. this generation is a lot more comfortable and yeah. and this group is is a lot more uh, specifically comfortable about uh, these kind of aspects surely surely and uh, we'll listen to Ritik because she speaks about how she likes to share her feelings and emotions yeah uh, i would feel that i will share my feelings to somebody who will respect my feelings like it is all about you know one having an emotional intelligence and when i know that from the other side i will be receiving the same like if i'll be sharing my feelings to somebody and uh, that person can keep up with my secrets and they can respect my feelings i'll share my feelings with them and personally speaking it's not just friends uh, which we can talk to or sometimes they, uh, they are parents also uh, like it depends on you know the parenting style like my parents they are not so authoritative they are very friendly with me so i would think that there is no clear cut uh, chasm between the two if i feel that i can open up to anyone like i can open up to my values or uh, some issues i will choose my parents and on some other issues with my friends so that is not from you know the foundation uh, that i will have to share it with my friends only yeah. so it can be anybody Yes, I do. I strongly do because if you have a strong advertising campaign or uh, something which touches the right kind of code with the audience, then definitely it changes perception. I mean, uh, like I really love to watch cricket matches, and he, after each over, there is an advertisement which appears on your screen. If that advertisement is something which is irritating me, then I will never buy that product because I am uh, watching that advertisement again and again and again. There is not a lot of time between two hours so there are there's a little less possibility of switching to the other channels i would watch those advertisements as well uh, and at the same time if that advertisement is as good as the advertisement uh, of uh, i would say very quick art then i will surely get indulged into buying that product for me uh, an adhesive which is uh, required to stick things which are not uh, which cannot be uh, brought together with the help of normal glue it has to be a work of very quick uh, i don't even know the names of its competitors so uh, advertising really helps a lot so so you can hear that she likes to share with her friends as well as her parents but also the fact that she don't want to be judged while she would open herself and uh, she would only share to those with those people who would kind of respect her feelings and emotions so that's kind of a give and take sort of a relationship that they expect and uh, you rightly said they're very emotional they're very true to their emotions and uh, really ex- like to express uh, and uh, share with their near and dear ones so the brands have this uh, and like I just mentioned previously that they are open to influence. So brand probably will need to appeal to their emotion side of this audience much more than the other ones. Yeah, and uh, obviously as expected because they want mm-hmm. to share and and you know impact uh, social uh, media mm-hmm. plays a very critical role in their lives. So they are highly social, they are on multiple platforms. Uh, they leverage uh, those platforms both for sharing their emotions as well as for you know spreading the message that they would want. I think the other key thing to remember about them is that uh, you know um, uh, in a way they are the quintessential uh, way we look at uh, Indian audiences very mm-hmm. value focused yeah, yeah. so uh, uh, while they love to shop and and there is a thread of uh, you know consumerism running through yeah. but uh, highly highly uh, focused on the value of things uh, that they are able to get so so there is a tough negotiation in their minds uh, in terms of the need for buying something vis-a-vis the value that it can bring yeah for sure for sure so uh, now we'll move over to the next audience who was the comfort zone there's a second largest audience so in terms of the placement in the quadrant so they are in that uh, sense of belonging or group affiliation versus more pragmatic in their mindset versus the previous one when when we look at them so they are uh, they they have a, a surrounding of comfort or like a shell of trust that they surround themselves like they uh, have a uh, 
people who are they like to consult uh, before taking any key decision like their family and the friends uh, so it, it's more like an advisory role that they have they would very much focus on their basics getting their basics right so they the, they definitely focus a lot more in terms of education uh, earning enough money uh, and also very much in mental satisfaction plays a very key role in their life they also while they would look for values but also they would seek some bit of style uh, or a quotient that would kind of influence their decision in their lives uh, and and again a mix of indulgence and entertainment kind of influences them a lot more from a media perspective so that's what they kind of seek in their consumption of media uh, in terms of the skews they are relatively more male focused they are spread in east and south or much higher uh, skewed more towards the top four cities of the country and uh, relatively younger audiences compared to other cohorts so that's the kind of audience uh, the comfort zoners are yeah so uh, you know if you really pull back and see the difference from the previous audience this group is is a lot more uh, rooted uh, grounded i, I would say <laughs> in terms of uh, uh, the kind of things that they adopt in and, and see the, the regions uh, that they come from mm-hmm. and also the age group since it's a younger age group that seems quite natural that you know they, they are still a lot more in the family cocoon I mm-hmm. would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing and th- that's reflective of the same is is this need for security or the sense of, of security of the familiar, mm-hmm. uh, security of, of what I know. Mm-hmm. So unlike the previous group which is all about impacting the larger world, this is more about being comfortable with themselves and the world around them and uh, therefore their path to success appears to be a lot more traditional in terms of you know education playing a very very big role. Yep. Uh, uh, earning enough money you mm. know making sure that i have enough for for my needs uh, those kind of things are important uh, the fact that they seek more deals mm. they they their their translation of you know value is more about deals mm. and and quick quick returns or quick gains uh, mm. is is something that that we can see yeah for sure and uh, this audience uh, plays definitely high importance on uh, mental satisfaction a lot where we'll hear uh, priyanka talking about uh, how mental satisfaction is very important for her Yes, I think in the same way because mental satisfaction is necessary uh, in day to day life because as per my own perspective, I am just saying that if we are in a bad mood, we are in a bad mood. But we can tell that we are not satisfied or not. We are struggling with our own struggles. And you all know that there is a lot of depression and common things that are going on today. We are depressed. We are doing our own things. We are doing our own things. भूखे पेट ना बीमार में कुछ आता नहीं Yeah. So as you can see, I mean, uh, very, very practical, yeah. uh, you know, uh, very, very practical in terms of the overall approach and how she is looking at life, what what is her priority in yeah. life and what she thinks is important. And um, in terms of media consumption also, you know, when we see this audience, of course, social remains a longer thread, mm-hmm. but they are also investing a lot of time and, uh, you know, their, their focus is on uh, things for themselves. So music, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, streaming, for example example comes up uh, with a high skew similarly ott content wherein yeah. they are consuming for themselves and and not uh, so much in terms of sharing or showing so there is a little bit of a nuance there as well yeah so that's the audience in terms of the comfort zoners as we just heard now we'll move over to the third audience who are in, in the cross section of people who are optimistic driven by hope and uh, on the other side it's more 
focused on self what we call them as uh, the balance trend seekers they're very much independent compared to the other ones so they like to take uh, their decision uh, themselves in some uh, in terms of thinking on their own and and after let's say uh, doing their own research uh, quite a bit uh, while they do that they're independent they are also very much because they constantly hunt information on their own they would like to stay on top of trends and what is the next cool and smart thing to do uh, that also influences in terms of their media decision as well where uh, they are influenced on the cool side of the media things which are more cool they get attracted by that so that's that's the brief summary of balanced trend seekers so they are distributed very much uh, strongly in the western part of the country and also they're uh, not in so much in terms of the metros but in the remaining part of the country and uh, distributed well in the older age group so that's the that's the kind of audiences what we are talking about when we talk about the balanced trend seeker yeah so uh, i think the interesting take that we have here is these are mostly people from uh, smaller towns and mm -hmm. and uh, i think it connects well with this whole need uh, for you know an identity for self mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. uh, very personal uh, maybe they are breaking out of you know what the rest of their uh, peer group or yeah. or their family has been about and and hence a strong sense of self yeah. wanting to establish uh, their decisions independently looking at things through their own lens yeah. and in that journey they they balance out a, a bit of you know what's for everyone versus indulgence for themselves yeah. so there is uh, there is that uh, interesting uh, choice i think which they make uh, across this path and that's why also this uh, thing of how they are seen uh, as cool and yeah. and maybe associating with things which are perceived as better or yeah. or things to be done yeah. so there is there is a nuance of that uh, yeah. which is also emerging in this audience yeah true and you mentioned about that how they are not in the larger cities but more in the smaller towns right? which kind of sh shows the aspirational value of the audience yes. so yes. they 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 seek which is more cool thing to do and more in thing to do they would be attracted by that yes. similarly when it comes to the media also when we uh, something which is like more appealing more cool uh, in in any media activities so they'll be easily attracted by that so that's the audience we'll listen from uh, um, Piyush he talks about how he thrives in focusing on individual tasks I think individual task any reason? Uh, because uh, I like to have my own uh, you know zone a creative space where I can work with myself so I have full freedom and full uh, independence of what I do and I don't have any consequences that see, I have to tell this guy or some other my superior or someone mm -hmm. so yeah okay. so what I can think of is that this has become a very popular traditional culture if I can say that mm -hmm. because you know we are very much influenced by the TV series or the movie culture so it's very prevalent there to have the great to have some sectionaries all the way throughout and especially in the morning after uh, lunch or during the during the evening time so I think it kind of have a lot of influence over it and moreover in our culture we have been accustomed to drinking tea so we all know that so it kind of has a collaborating everything is collaborating together to force us to do such things so i think it's there's an influence that has been going on for ages so that is why and yeah it becomes a habit eventually so i think so okay so do you have any favorite beverage so there he, he talks about individual own decision own way of working uh, where he he's not answerable to too many people so they can uh, decide on their own and make their own decision make their own mistakes and then move on like like we've discussed earlier as well yeah. Yeah, so that's the that's the audience uh, in terms of the balanced trend seeker, and lastly is the uh, sensitive reserved audience who are in the cross section between who are more self focused and have a very pragmatic mindset. These audiences are more uh, in terms of they are like like the name suggests, so they are very much cautious in their approach. So they would uh, evaluate things much deeply. They are more focused and driven in in their decision. Education is a key thing for them. Their their drive is to contribute towards the society. 
society on one side they're more reserved but yet they have this sensitive side that they want to focus more in terms of the career and and while doing the so they can contribute to the society while they are more reserved but uh, probably they are not interacting too men too much with their peer groups or the near and dear ones but they're consuming a lot of media their consumption of media is very high in terms of the index it's almost like 110 compared to other audiences uh, so their consumption of media is much higher uh, the reason could be that they are not interacting with so much with the peer ones but taking more information from media and other surroundings so that's the kind of audiences in sensitive reserves are they're they're well distributed not in not in the north of the country but rather in the west uh, east and south of the country and uh, again they're not so much focused in terms of the top cities but rather uh, in the smaller towns again so this was something which was interesting the people who are more sense of belongings they're more skewed slightly more towards the metros or larger towns versus people who are more self-focused that they, they are, seem to be more from the uh, smaller towns so that was an interesting thing that how people are focusing in the smaller towns more about self and then uh, and and their own goal towards the future yeah and and that sort of fits in i think with the larger understanding yeah. because that's where probably the change in lifestyle the change yeah. in uh, you know people coming in uh, for different jobs or education yeah. is the highest yeah. so uh, it makes sense for them to articulate uh, their aspirations or or their personalities in that way and uh, i think if you look at the sensitive reserved uh, what what you really find is they have faith in themselves they mm. they're fairly sure about uh, what they want to achieve how they want to achieve and then they don't see too much of merit tom toming about mm. it or you know uh, just just talking about it so in, in a sense they they are more careful they are they are more focused in terms of what they want to achieve and and there is a social or or i would say a larger uh, angle to it wherein they want to do things which are for everyone they want to contribute back to society and and a lot of their uh, consumption of media is led by that wherein they're trying to understand mm. what is happening in the world around them yeah uh, what is going on and and how they can decode that into you know what it would mean for them uh, and and in terms of the kind of things that they choose to do is uh, I would say a lot more led by simplicity yeah. Uh, yeah. unlike you know one of the earlier groups that we spoke about where consumerism was yeah. was a sort of a driver thread yeah. so uh, it, it's quite distinct in terms of yeah. you know the mindset and uh, uh, how how they look at things and and one of the things because the consumption of media is so high they are they're also very conscious about this yes. information overload and yes. and the fact that there are a lot of things around uh, you know whether they are uh, so they're in that sense i think a lot more evaluative as well yes yes certainly and that's exactly the uh, jaya will talk about that uh, how she has uh, while she has very high in terms of consumption but also this balanced approach of how to evaluate things evaluate all the information and then take decision maybe yeah i feel that i have a very, ba- very balanced approach to digital media so uh, i have been told that there is a limit so i don't feel affected by it but then i also feel people around me are consuming a lot of information uh, which are which may be authentic which may be not and that is a uh, sort of problematic thing because in this current situation there are a lot of rumors and fake news that are that are circulating and then people are into it too much so it's why there's the starting point of the source of anxiety, fear and depression and everything. Because we are surrounded, we are surrounded ourselves with all the negative information throughout the day. That's not helpful at all. Okay, so two factors. Uh, first of all, uh, the income. The kind of job you are holding or what sort of uh, resources they are providing you. So in terms of better salaries, if you can get, because uh, you are in job is primary, so you want some kind of a money out of an organization. So one thing is uh, money and the second thing is growth. So in whichever your organization you are working, so I will prefer growth. So if they provide me a conducive environment to grow, so I will preferably go there. So money and growth. All right. So uh, where do you put mental satisfaction, growth, and money? Can you rank these three? Okay. So basically, I will put um, second. Um, my mind is second. First is growth, and third is the money. All right. So what? 
so there uh, she talks clearly about what you just spoke of uh, that uh, the she would evaluate things she would listen to a lot of conversation and a lot of things on social media as well and digital media and then she would decide her own on her own she can ha- she can she has this filter very evaluative as rightly said uh, of a very filter which are fake news which one should stay away from versus one uh, information which is good for you and which you can take it forward so that's the sensitive reserve very cautious in 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 their approach so so these are the four audiences client rooted somebody who is female and uh, more uh, not uh, driven phenomenon uh, and uh, they are very much driven by hope uh, uh, group affiliation so they are very much emotional uh, comfort zoner who are relatively more practical uh, and uh, uh, more deal seeking in their mindset they are more pragmatic yet having uh, the sense of belonging that they seek uh, balanced trend seekers they are the like the name suggests they are they want to stay on top of trends they are also optimist but they are more focused on self they would like to take decision on their own versus the sensitive reserved who are more uh, cautious in terms of their decision making their focus on self and very much pragmatic and rational thought process that they have so these are the four audiences that we uh, were looking at uh, any final thoughts aditi no so i hope you enjoyed uh, looking at the gen z through this lens which uh, we felt offers us a, a, a much more deeper view of how they are looking at the world mm-hmm. and and how we can engage with them what kind of messaging can resonate with them what kind of uh, brand or uh, you know product offers would be more meaningful for them mm-hmm. because while uh, pretty much all of these audiences exist across the country but there are very clear skews that we see and and we feel that brands and marketers can gain a lot if they were to engage with the gen z keeping this lens in mind yeah yeah for sure and uh, this podcast is the episode so 6 of the series and uh, for for, for sometime this will be the final episode in in this series of podcast that we've done uh aditi any final thoughts for overall uh, looking back <laughs> uh, so i think it's it's been uh, it's been quite interesting i think looking at uh, gen z a lot of things that we have learned across the six podcasts be it in terms of you know how they view media how they are uh, in some ways similar but in mm-hmm. some ways quite distinct from mm-hmm. generations before mm-hmm. and the fact that uh, we need to uh, really uh, deep dive into their mindset yeah. and and make brands and marketers uh, look at uh, them as distinct groups rather than a one uh, yeah. brush for everyone yeah. because while at the, at large they are defined by a certain age group and a mm-hmm. life stage mm-hmm. but actually there are distinct clusters there are very very clear guidelines in terms of how we should engage with them and yeah. i think that's the next stage for us uh, as yeah. we get into the next round of research with them yeah. so we will hopefully circle back soon yeah. uh, once we have some more information on our hands and we have yeah. more gen z insiders talking to us yeah and uh, so like uh, i said so this is a uh, episode 6 of the series so if you want if you like listening to this one if, if you've discovered this one for the first time please go back and listen to the previous one so we discuss the gen z's from different different lenses so probably hopefully you'll enjoy all of them thank you so much have a nice day thanks for listening everyone have a great time and we look forward to hearing from you yeah thank you so much bye bye